This episode is brought to you by Marvel Studios Echo. All episodes streaming January 9th, only on Hulu and Disney+. Plus. Rated TVMALV. Viewer discretion advised. Maya Lopez has betrayed her mentor, the notorious Kingpin. Now on the run, she returns to her hometown to prepare for the biggest fight of her life. Don't miss Marvel Studios' hardest-hitting series yet. An epic five-episode event. Marvel Studios Echo. All episodes streaming January 9th, only on Hulu and Disney+. Plus. Join me, 48 Hours correspondent Erin Moriarty, on my podcast, My Life of Crime, as I take on true crime investigations like no other. This season, I'm looking into the labyrinth of crime and secrets within families. I'm cutting straight to the evidence and talking to the people directly involved, including investigators and the families of victims. Listen to My Life of Crime with Erin Moriarty wherever you get your podcasts. Hey y'all, I'm April. And I'm Caroline. And this This is your bloody happy hour. Caroline, are you ready for this? This is your newest guilty pleasure. It's the bloodiest part of your week. Did we say something about it also being happy hour? Showed in. Because we're about to be sipping on some murder. Bloody happy hour. Hey, bloodies. This is April. And this is Caroline. Turn up Tuesday. We got some news for you. But first, we don't want you to forget about our BHH code for... Who, oh, Manscaped? Yeah. Manscaped? Yeah. I have... Listen, people are using it. People are loving it. People are living their best life with their smooth balls and smooth armpits and smooth faces. Because, you know, you can... Yeah, and, and no hair face. hanging out the nose. No, we don't need that nasty nose hair or ear hair. What do we have? Weed whacker. We got the lawnmower. We got the ball cream. We got the ball deodorant. We got the, the shorts boxers and the fancy bag. And y'all, I'm trying to tell you how good it smells. You guys get 20% off of this package or any of the Manscaped items. 20% off and free shipping you can have it shipped to wherever zimbabwe. you want to zimbabwe um africa jerusalem 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 oh my gosh um so go ahead and get those stocking stuffers going now yes start ordering them now because this code is not going to be good for much longer also I don't think I told y'all last time, but this time there is a subscription option. So if you want to keep getting that ball deodorant and that ball toner, you can sign up for the $14.99 subscription every three months, or you can choose not to. The choice is yours. The choice is yours. Make the right decision. Make mm-hmm. the right choice. Yeah. And just go to manscaped.com and enter code BHH for 20% off your purchase. Get the performance package so you package can perform better. Oh, absolutely. I love that. Let's do it. Okay. So I got some news. I know Caroline's always got some news. So we just like keeping you guys in the know. Um, First off, we are drinking on some Dos Equis salt and lime because the store I went to had no Trulies or White Claws. I don't know what store you're going to, but it's... I mean, Special we, we kind of had some words. <laughs> we kind of had some words. I won't go into it. C- and Caroline, what do you have? Oh, I have a little bit of the rest of the Grey Goose. Okay. And I'm going to also have one of your Dos Equis. Nice. <laughs> and I look, I just found a random Vegas koozie in my car. It's probably been in there since oh I went God. to Vegas. That just reminds me of that suitcase. I feel official. Oh, it does. Everything... I will be single forever because <laughs> I just only know about everything about murder. Oh yeah, of course. It's only it's only I don't thing know anything. Know People are like, "What's what's new in your life? What's going on?" And I'm like, "Have you heard of the Idaho murder?" <laughs> well, like there was Did this- you watch the jailed <laughs> Dare Brooks trial? Do you know that Courtney Clenny is going to the trial in December? And when they don't, you get pissed off at them. And it's I'm like, like "Where? You're not normal. Where are you living your life? Are you not on YouTube all the time?" <laughs> Come on. Somebody that I worked with was reading a book, and I was like, oh, what are you reading? And it was a book on speaking in tongue. 
You know, okay. like you do at church. You know, that's not, that's not necessary. <laughs> I know. That is unacceptable. And so he went There's to no this need for that. whole conversation about, you know, just looking into it, which is fine. And in my head, I was like, that is a w- odd thing to th- read about. But then I was like, people think that about me. I read about serial killers and kids killing their parents. And so, I mean. Well, I did just judge him right now. I did too. But I caught myself and then I took it back. Because I just think about grown up a little bit. Uh, what's his name with the cut his snake adult adopophis apothesis apothesis yeah. that guy who's speaking in tongues and doing oh all... yeah so then I just go to that and then I'm like you're a weirdo <laughs> you you're associated freak. it you're with a the murder freak again. and I can't handle you no he's a very nice Christian guy he was just reading us something that I never thought people would read about I mean I don't know maybe you want to learn a new language. So, let me tell you, there's a small little Debbie Collier update. I watched the um, Crime on the Record interview. Oh, interview with the daughter? With Amanda Bearden, the daughter. And I was really surprised that she was speak. She did this interview. It was really long. Um, but it turns out the host was her cousin. Oh, well, that's cheating. Yeah. Um, and she didn't grift off of that before sooner than that. Well, she wasn't going to because she didn't want to be, I guess, that person. But I was like, look, you know, I have a true crime podcast. She's I'm gonna need you to be on it. <laughs> yes, long lost cousin. Um, but she said that their family was ridiculing Amanda so bad, like she was blackballed at the funeral. She almost couldn't mourn her mom's funeral because. Most of them think she's a killer, right? So this was her way of, I guess, advocating for herself. And I just, I don't, I can't even give it like a letter grade. I can't say she made an A, a B, or C. When I first heard the 911 call, when we first talked about it, I thought that emotion was genuine. I just didn't know, is it genuine because her mom is gone? Or is it genuine because she realized what she did? Yeah. And I, I, I still don't know. Um, I do feel bad that if she didn't do it, she can't mourn her mom the other way. But she thinks that her mom committed suicide. Um, her brother doesn't think that. Which I think it's weird for her to say that. Right. I would, if, I would. Typically, people are like, there's no, no way. way. There's no way. Denial is that first yes. stage, right? She didn't even go through it. She skipped over that I stage. would be like, no, not suicide. Somebody killed her. Investigate any and everybody. So, so it's making you what... think she's taking the easy way. She's like, oh, yeah, it was for sure suicide. She for sure to rule me attached out. herself or was clinging onto a tree and burned out her body and was naked. So then that part was to... Because, you know, when you commit suicide, your insurance policy doesn't pay your insurance policy. So people have said that she, her mom did commit suicide, but set it up to look like it was a murder so that the insurance policy will pay out, right? Well, why does she care about that? Because she wants to leave her family set, I guess. I mean, I just like, why do I care about that? I'm just trying to kill myself. (laughs) I don't know. You obviously don't, don't care about anything. If but you're look, to there's no damn insurance policy. Oh. <laughs> and Amanda ruled that out. She was like, I don't know where they're getting this from because there's no insurance policy. So why would she be doing that? What I I left feeling um, very unsatisfied because nobody asked, why would she have a tarp and a rope and a torch? And why would she be in the state that she was if it was suicide? Like those questions did not come up and I was pissed that they weren't. So, well, guess what? That's the same reaction you're going to have after you watch that Casey Anthony interview. If you watch that bullshit. Oh, did it, did it already happen? No, it's coming out uh, on the night. I think it's the 19th. Well, yeah. Oh, uh, the day that we're recording, it's coming out in two days. Okay. But that means it came out like two days ago. <laughs> Got it? Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. So that was that for Debbie Collier. And we're going to talk about some child abuse because everywhere I turned this past week, it was articles after article after article. Yeah. uh, Casey texted me and she was like, can you um, put put something on your Instagram story? The bloody happy hour Instagram story. That's uplifting because all I keep seeing is these (laughs) 
horrible child abuse. Child abuse is somebody's in the freezer, somebody's in the washing machine, Ugh. somebody's stuck in the dog cage. All these kids, the fentanyl overdose, and then I'm like, I know, I, I don't know. <laughs> and then when Lacey comes to work out with me, I just talk, 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 murder, 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 because all day I'm just with myself. I and know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Um, no, she needs to go like a rainbow or like sunshine. And well, then I said sometimes I do post palette cleansers. So I might like Let's post some, some funny, funny video yeah. like in the middle of it. Just no cats. There actually was one that it wasn't a cat. It was a it was a bobcat. Oh, it's even worse. But it was actually kind of cute. Can I even tell you that I dis dis no excommunicated one of my brother in laws from the family. He's no longer can his last name can no longer be Pullen. Guess why? Oh my gosh, does he have a cat? Two. Like a like an inside cat. Like Two. A pet. Okay, I understand an outside cat if you live in the country. He lives in an apartment in California. No, I'm done. Well, well he okay. did. He did. He lives in California. There you go. But he ain't from California. He's only been there like since January. So he te- sent a text. We had a trip. Did he planned. send a text with the cats in it? Play a video playing. <laughs> And so it's him and his girlfriend. They moved down to California, <laughs> right? Can't. His girlfriend's Mexican. Remember, I am Mexican because I'm about to say something inappropriate, but I can say it. Oh, his, yeah. Him and his and a him and his girlfriend moved down to California. I guess they're lonely, so she went and got two yellow cats, oh, right? No. We were going to go down there for a trip because it's San Diego. My son was going to go down there for a trip. Canceled. 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 You send us cat videos. We out. And then he had the nerve to say, April, I promise you'll love them when you meet them. Oh, no. And I was like, do you not know me? Jesus would have to come to Jesus earth and tell me. <laughs> tell me to love these cats. He's trying to fuck around and find out. Listen, so I told him, I said, Tyler Pullen. I said his whole name. He's going to get mad. Tyler Pullen, <laughs> you... Your girlfriend better got them cats to make some tacos tonight. That's the only reason for you <laughs> have some cats. And if you're keeping these cats for pets, your last name's about to be Espinosa and not Pullen. So he's been excommunicated. I don't blame you. Oh, well, well, there's your news for there, this story. You know, we want No, that's good. I like it. We need okay. a little bit of that. Let's go to Cypress, Texas in Houston. Okay. So, oh, I'm going to show you this picture, and we're going to post it, of this amazing I'm just glad that you kind of got us off track and not me. I know. Because it's always me. And now a word from our sponsors. Nine one one. what's your emergency? Do you hear that? It's coming from the house. It's coming from inside the house? Uh, Do you mean, could it be... The Bolter Gals. New from Rogue Media, two haunted hotties talking about haunted places. Every episode, we dive deep into the darkest places and give you a bit of history. We're getting spooky in all the right places. You gobbled your last ghoul. Follow along for the craziest and spookiest stories with Debbie's Dark Tourism. The Stanley Hotel, Winchester House, The Alamo, Hotel Monte Vista, and more spooky places. Find us at the underscore Poltergals, P-O-L-T-E-R-G-A-L-S. Look over your shoulder. It's us, the Poltergals. Wherever you consume the podcast, you can find us there. Welcome to One Star Rewind, a new podcast about those dreaded one star reviews that every business owner hates to receive, but yet every customer loves to read. During this podcast, we will peel back that one star review to better understand how it happened, when it happened, and what the business owner is doing after receiving that one star review. This podcast will be about love, hate, and laughter. On One Star Rewind, we will meet with real business owners 
who will tell their stories and how they do rely on reviews for their business. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or download us at roguemedianetwork.com. Please subscribe, but only rate and review for not a one-star review. Join us each time for a new review and a new story. Zach and I'm Mike and we have a fantastic new podcast to tell you about bros foes and heroes it's the two of us looking into the world of comics breaking down some characters that you may have never heard of and some that are just absolutely ridiculous yeah so Zach comes up with a character each time and uh, I go into it just completely blind I don't know who this person is or what their abilities are or anything and, and basically I guess we kind of go over their origin story and just some of the ridiculous stuff that maybe, especially Golden Age stuff. Oh, Golden yeah. Age stuff is always the best. And we will make sure to highlight all of the shenanigans and just absolute weirdness yeah. of everything. Yeah, that's right. So subscribe today and uh, follow us on Instagram at Bros Bros Heroes. And if you don't, I know where you live. Not really, but please subscribe. <laughs> bros and Bros and Heroes. Gonna tell you about pros and foes and heroes. Gonna Gonna tell tell you about. about Okay, so this home right here, it's a Cypress, Texas, beautiful home in a beautiful, beautiful gated community, right? This gated community has a pool with a lazy river. Okay. A pool with a lazy river, and it has like a splash pad and this walking trail and big old nice park. The mortgage on it was $4,200 rent. Okay, so a girl named Zakiah Duncan and a guy named jo- Jova Terrell moved into this amazing home in Houston um, from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Red flag. Okay. <laughs> they have eight kids total but only seven of them are living in this house with them well they lost one on the road i guess they (laughs) They lost one on the trip yeah one left one at one of the swamps so (laughs) they're like with these seven kids there is a set of twins a boy and a girl twin okay um they had they got this house and they, but neither one of them have a job. Like he was a self-proclaimed rapper, but has they never produced have a job? music. They did not okay. have a job. All right, so they're robbing people. So, and tw- just a little bit going back in 2019, Zakaya was convicted for cruelty to a juvenile by desertion, like abandonment, basically. So she deserted one of her kids, probably that eighth kid. I have so many questions. <laughs> Why? Okay. What? Cruel- I, I just don't. I'm like, how do they have this big house? Why do they have all these kids? Are they their kids? Are they? They're all her kids. She had them out of her vagina. Out of her vagina. I don't think. We don't know he, who the daddy is. He's a stepdad. He's like a new boyfriend or something. They're not even married. Are they? Are the, all the kids from the same dad? I don't know. We don't know. Yeah, we don't know that yet. But I, why I doubt they it. Ha- why do they have all this money? I don't, we, we don't, don't know, know how they have money. I'm pretty sure they sell drugs and probably get like checks for the kids, lift off the government. Like, so all I want to do is have eight shit. kids and I can get all that money? Sure. You can also choose to not feed them like she did and you'll have even more money. Okay. In 2012, she was arrested for cruelty to a juvenile. One of her kids had horrible burn injuries that um, led to the thought you know, of abortion being is legal in submerged. Texas. <laughs> and hot water. You don't get money if you don't have your kids. <laughs> That's the whole point. A lot of people have them to get money. But it co- they cost money. But it's all paid for. The food's paid for. You get TANF. What, what, is that get, a food stamp? 
food stamps? TANF is, I don't is know real that. money. We're not going to have this conversation. Okay. So, <laughs> in 2012, she was arrested for cruelty to a juvenile for the burn injuries that she that supposedly the kid was submerged in very, very, very hot water. Vegetable oil. That led hot water that led to burning. So, this had to have been scalding hot water. Like, she turned on the bath water all the way hot and was like, B- get in. Or whatever she did. Get or in. she, <gasps> Or she boiled water and put their hand in the water. Oh, it was Like, it punishment. was that bad. Yeah, yeah. So, she got her kids. All these kids got taken away. She oh. lost custody. Wow. For a long time. But whatever you have to do in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Has nothing to, to do with back, doing nothing about it in Texas. She got them back in Baton Rouge. So she did whatever you do. Sometimes it's classes. Sometimes it's counseling. She was able to regain custody of her kids. Mm. And after she regained custody of her kids is when they moved to Texas. CPS is one of the worst organizations that they exist. They are. They are. So, yes, it's a hard job, but they get it wrong. Mm-hmm. It, Everybody mm, does. A lot. Yeah, but, oh my, oh gosh. Doctors get it wrong and people die. They Nurses but, get it wrong and people die. Yeah, but sometimes they do that on purpose. Yeah, they do. <laughs> so, we so have, now we she's living spitting in so Texas. many facts. <laughs> now she's living in Texas and she's living her best life in this house and this neighborhood oh, her yeah. social media like she's got a tiktok craze her and her kids are like doing these tiktok dances together not the ones she starved but there's always two kids missing like here's all these family pictures but the twins aren't really in these pictures uh-uh. right yeah. so something happened in the early morning hours of october 18th there were two kids twins one boy one girl they were seen on their neighbor's ring cameras Yes, at nighttime, right? It was dark outside. One of them didn't have on a shirt. They were emaciated. 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 I can't want to say emancipated. <laughs> Proclamation. <laughs> um, they were sunken in. They were bony. They were starving. So they had got out and they were ringing doorbells asking to come in. Can we come in? We need help. Can we come in? And what do you think is going to happen in this neighborhood when you got two black kids ringing well, on the doorbell? Well, I, I would be scared to answer. At, you had somebody at your on your ring the other day and you didn't even want to get up or answer. Remember, we thought it was Dirty Chad and there was probably. Oh, yeah, you. but I don't ever answer. Yeah. <laughs> See? And so it's not blaming, it's anybody. Like, if I'm at home at night by myself anyways, If you're watching, by scared. the way, our YouTube, we're playing the video of the, uh, of the ring doorbell. Um, but go ahead. So, there finally, they go to a house and a single mom lets them in. And she says that she sees them, she hears the fear in their voices, and she lets them in. But they had to try multiple times. They did. Oh, my God. Can you let us in? Can you let us in? Look, this little boy doesn't have on a shirt. We just need to go some. We just need somewhere to be right now. They knew they escaped. Because one of the boys had found the handcuff key and put it in his mouth. Yeah. From his mom's purse. Yes. So the lady let him in. She gave him blankets. She oh, gave them food. Little babies. She gave them water. And um, she was just like, I could not turn them away. I couldn't turn them away. So then they called the police. And the kids were transported to Houston Hospital where they had to stay for a not overnight. Like for a long period of time. I oh think they gosh, just got the out. Wrist. Because they were so dehydrated and starved. And if you look at their (gasps) wrist, they were handcuffed. They were zip tied. Yes. Their hands and their ankles. Go watch. Go watch us on YouTube right now. We have a video of it playing in the background uh, as we're talking about it. Oh, it's so bad. Oh, my gosh. And um, those poor babies. They said that they own. They get to eat a sandwich if 
they make no noise. That bitch. She's pretty. Look at her. She's pretty. I, I know. You would not even think. She doesn't look like she's on drugs. So they get a sandwich if they get to, if they're quiet all day long, they get one sandwich. Well, obviously they weren't quiet enough for her because they hadn't eaten since like a week before. So they were starving and she was just feeding them everything, right? So the police have interviewed them and they went to go and find uh, whatever her name is, Zariah, Zakiah, and they were gone. They abandoned this house and they later found in Baton Rouge. So she took her, her boyfriend and the other kids and they fled back to Baton Rouge where they were picked up. You mean the other six kids or whatever? Yeah. Um, her boyfriend was arrested for some type of assault charge. And of course she's arrested, but the things that those boys said happened, they had, they were severely malnourished. Like I told you their arm lacerations from being tied up and handcuffed. And one of them still had the handcuffs on them. Cause he just took off when he unlocked it. There were blisters, swollen wrist, eye and arm fractures that were never like so she would break their arm, but they never got fixed all the way like they never were in a cast. So you see where it was messed up really, really bad. Um, an Amber Alert was issued for the other five children. They were also found in Baton Rouge and she is in jail on a four million dollar bond. They were beaten with extension cords. They were starved. She would make them drink bleach. She would make them use the bathroom on themselves. They had to eat each other's feces and drink each other's urine. This is all allegedly. And she would make them take enormous amounts of Benadryl. One of them said that one night she made him swallow 23 of them and that his sibling told her that he was convulsing and throwing up that night. So then after that, she would only make him take 20. Every night he took 20? I don't know if it was every night. I don't know how often. I don't know if it's like when people were coming over. How do you not die? How do you not die? I don't know. It's a miracle. Why are you having all these kids? Why are you having all these kids? I will take one or two. How do you heal from this, these kids? So I know supposedly but like, they're safe. They're being put with like some some people here in Houston that'll hopefully ugh. do them so much better. But how do you recover from this? It's just crazy. I hopefully they're getting all I always the feel like, oh, water burger I'll ever. Live with me and my dogs. I, know. I will help you, but I will just be nice and I won't beat you with those center cords. I know. So Ugh, let's hate just people. go again. This is what gets me like she just didn't do this. Her and she found a guy that thought this was OK, too. Isn't that crazy? Mm. OK, so now we're in North Carolina and a nine year old boy was locked in a kennel in a backyard. He was found. The child told the authorities that he had been there since April of 2022 outside in the kennel locked up day after day after day the reason was is because he didn't have a room in the home so because he didn't mm. have a room he had to be in a kennel outside in the backyard um in the home there were three adults his real dad his stepmother and his aunt three adults thought this was okay there were other siblings in the house um, and everybody in the house was aware of his of his living conditions and they would take him snacks from time to time. Um, but that's it. Like nobody really did anything for him until finally a neighbor called the police. But when they questioned people more, they found out that neighbors. What the hell? So many neighbors knew that they were back there like. One of the neighbors said, oh, yeah, I would take him snacks from time to time. What? Bitch, neighbor, get him out the cage. Call the police. <sighs> yeah, look at these people. Um, so the adults in the house were arrested and charged with felony abuse, of course. And 
the call was a na- mm-hmm. made by an, an anonymous person about 7 a.m. And let me see. The boy was found in a shirt and jeans with no shoes and below freezing temperatures. Oh, that's good. In North Carolina. There was also another eight-month-old baby and a four-year-old child in the house. They were taken by EMS. And they had another seven-year-old and eight-year-old that were at school. So that is four kids in the house, one outside in a dog kennel. I can't with these people. Since they've arrested these people, they have found pictures of this same child as a toddler and as a baby in the same kennel. Uh Uh-uh. So they didn't just start this in April. They have been doing it. It has just been consistent. Like that's how they keep from their, April. That's just that's where the kid goes. That's where the kid. That's there. But why? This is what gets me. Why this kid and not the other four? Like why those twins and not the other four? What it usually is is the daddy. That daddy. It's oh, the kid. The kid's daddy. The mom has something against that kid's daddy, so they take it out on that oh kid. So I guarantee the twins have a different daddy. Than, than, other. than the others. Um, and for some reason, that daddy pisses them off more. Plus, the twins got her in trouble before when she burned them. Right? I'm going back to the Houston right. case. Yeah. yeah. Um, so she was probably like, you ain't going nowhere because you'll tell all my business or whatever it is. Right? <sighs> this one. Why him? Like, why this little baby? I don't know. Oh, uh, Okay. There was another Louisiana case that one uh, who had a two-year-old boy who died from taking all her pills with fentanyl. Oh, I saw that. And she is like, apparently her house was a drug house, and he, there had been two separate occasions that he's been to the hospital for dehydration and all this other issues. But then CPS came in, they took him out, and they brought him back yeah. because, you know, that's how CPS does things. Yeah. It's crazy, like... And then the lady, the CPS lady in that area got fired. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I don't know why, why do you, why, why even have CPS? Why is it even a thing? Because they don't do shit. (laughs) They just, they take, they take the good parents away from the kid, like the good ones who aren't doing harm away. Yeah. Yeah. And then they keep, they let the abusive parents stay with it. And usually Children. there's a three strike rule. Like after your third, you get three times to get your kids taken away and deal with CPS. And after mm. the third time, you can lose your total rights. But you get three times to fuck a kid up. Yeah, before I mean, I'm that, pretty sure crazy. it only takes one time to. Oh, for me, me, I'm sure if I said CPS called on me one time, it'd be done. Done. I just think because that's how it is. It's like the good people always go down and the bad people get away with it. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay, Idaho University, we have to end with that one. We got to end. I've been bawling and bawling about that one and the Virginia University. They happened like hours apart. They happened hours apart. The reason that, so obviously they're both horrible. The Virginia one is a little bit more concise just because it was, they were all shot, but then we have a, we have a suspect in custody. Uh I feel like that's why maybe the Idaho one is a little bit more getting more recognition or whatever, just because of the circumstance circumstances of it. And the whole, is it, was it Virginia universe or is that a bigger, or university of Virginia? I don't know the whatever. size of them at all. Um, I just know there were four football players, three of them. They were all coming back from a field trip. One football player, who might have been a former one. I don't know if they officially released it, but he didn't play this last season. Shot the other three. One of them was sleeping. sleeping. Um, now there has been like mixed information that the, the boys might have been bullying him and that he was fed up when he got up and shot him. One of the witnesses said that y'all always – Y'all are always messing with me and then shot him, which the witness was like, they hadn't said anything to him like that. I remember the whole trip. So she didn't know where that came from. The bus, the girl on the, the bus. girl on the bus. Yeah. 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 Um, but then the dad, the shooter's dad, it was interviewed and he was like, um, 
he had been paranoid these last couple of oh, gosh. weeks. And I just wish he would have came to me. But supposedly he's had a gun charge before and he's got a criminal background, which I wonder if he's going to have like this mental background. Like oh, what was gosh. the paranoia? What was all that? Either way, it's so sad. Like three parents sent their kids mm. to college to start a new chapter and they get a phone call like this. <sighs> They're all like so good looking. Bo- I mean, it's just they're I like. No, I know. I know I, if I know. you're homeless with missing teeth, it's just different. If you're homeless with missing teeth, and if you're like good looking people, I'm just saying. <laughs> sorry if I offended you, but go get to the dentist. <laughs> Bye. Well, um, but in Idaho, there was a quadruple murder, Y'all. and there were some fr- one fraternity member. The rest were sorority members. So it was one guy, three girls. Um. Kaylee Gonzalez, 20 years old. Madison Mogan, 21. Zana. Zana. 20. I don't want to butcher her last name. Wait. Kernoodle. Yes, Kernoodle. And then Ethan Chapin was the only Kaylee, it, her, it's Kaylee Gone Calves. Not oh. Gonzalez. Oh, it's, maybe my thing autocorrected because I'm in <laughs> Texas. <laughs> I was like, there's not a Gonzalez. It's Gone Calves because I've typed it out so many times okay but some of them went to high school together ethan was the only boy he was a triplet he was very athletic they interviewed his parents and all we know is they were shot in the early morning hours between like two and five two and three a.m and but there wasn't a call until 1 p.m supposedly there were roommates upstairs sleeping through the whole time yes which this is it what I have. It sounds suspicious, but it doesn't because do you know how a college kid sleeps? Yeah, Through well, in so many things. Plus, now we know they weren't shot; they were stabbed. They were. It was. Um, some of the officers said that it was the worst and most brutal and horrific crime scene that they have seen in their career. Some of the officers are 20 to 30 years in their career. I think that this is a small town. I think that they they don't see much of this kind of stuff. I think that they really kind of didn't really know how to react and what to say to the public. They didn't want to give much information. They wanted to assure the public that everything was going to be fine, that there was no need to worry because they thought it was targeted. I don't know why they thought it was targeted. Apparently they have a reason, but they're not telling us why they have that reason. And then they also are saying that at first they were saying the community was safe. And now they're saying they cannot say that the community is safe. Because they have no suspect, they have nobody in custody, and they have no murder weapon. And they're saying that it was with a knife, and everybody in the, the, people start speculating, they said it was due to drugs, that they had some kind of overdose, and then, like, sisters and relatives came out, and they were like, stop saying that, this is not about an overdose, this is a hor- horrific crime scene, this, they were murdered, and it did just come out, um as we're recording that their official uh, cause of, well, manner cause of death was like, Homicide. yeah, yeah. From being stabbed from being stabbed. Um, and so by the time you hear this, there's probably going to be so much more developed. So this is where you need page. to go. You need to l- y'all go to the Instagram, Instagram stories that's I'm always like we are always posting on Instagram stories. We try to keep it updated as much as possible. And typically only day that we don't really do a lot of posting is on a Sunday because, you know, there's football that's happening and not much new news goes out on Sundays. But um, we're trying to keep all these stories updated. But this 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 story is. So bad. It's and keep- they say that there's like the two roommates that were up. Did we say that? Two yeah. roommates were upstairs. Somebody, we don't know who called the cops. We don't know who, because they called for, and they reported an unconscious body. Yeah. Which is like. Yeah. It's so, there's so many holes. I just um, think they're just think a small gonna- community and they just don't really know how to handle it. And they, and they even in the conference said, we wish we would have made a statement like, Several days earlier, two days earlier, we wish we would have made a statement. He said that. 
And then something about there and was he's a like warning. getting real choked up like as he's given like as he's talking. So I'm like, that's what kind of gave him the impression that he just there's nothing even close to what they he's never experienced anything close to this. Don't be a cop in a small town because you ain't gonna know how to be a cop when something happens. It's sad. I mean, it, 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 I felt bad. I like, I, you know, because you. Every small town murder we talk about, it's like this. It's like we've never seen anything like that. They got to get somebody to come in. I know. And it, I felt so bad because I'm like, you know, he's just like completely shocked. Yeah. Doesn't know how to handle it. Th- they even said that the officers, like, they've already, per- they're already providing ment- mental health uh, help to the officers who had to go into the crime scene. It was that bad. They're saying it's a crime of passion, which if. I, I was like, what What do you mean a crime of passion or a targeted crime? Crime of passion is like you are in the moment and you it's n- might not be premeditated. But when you get in it, you, it's overkill. That's what it is. It's overkill. Mm-hmm. So it's like in that picture that I saw and I posted it, there's blood dripping out of the house on the out, outside of the concrete out outside of the foundation it's dripping onto the ground you didn't see that Uh, i had people uh, commenting on it it was so bad it's so bad i need to go and watch the story um watch our stories y'all but we're gonna keep you (laughs) updated with this we said their names right we said all the victims names and then the victims from the university uh virginia university players are devin chandler lavelle davis jr deshaun perry and then wounded was kid by the last name of Hollis wounded another student, but he has had surgeries and he has recovered. Oh, so maybe we forget about he can that. Tell, huh? Like what happened if he was? Yeah, like maybe. Yeah, and I'm sure they're doing investigating. Oh, that's the blood. Can you imagine coming out the house? The foundation of the wow. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. Y'all hug your babies tightly. If you're abusing your kid right now, stop and drop them off at a damn fire, fire station. station or drop off at my house. I got Caroline's plenty house. of She I won't open rooms. the door. She just told you that. but I won't open the door, but eventually just, when she goes for a walk, she'll see them outside. Yeah, just text me beforehand or com- or whatever. Just Woo, that was a quickie. That's probably a full episode. That's well, right, y'all. it was needed and there's a lot of stuff happening so sorry about your luck. We didn't, we gave you all, that. all that information was very good. Yeah. So yeah. bye. Stories you need to be knowing. Okay, y'all, we will see y'all Thursday for the full episode. Don't forget to stay aware, stay alive, and always be DTF. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye. Ow. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast.